The following is a Terry Weiss production. Yeehaw! Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to Weiss Thoughts. I'm Terry Weiss, and I am so glad that you've decided to join us for this episode of the podcast. I hope all is well with you and yours as you go about your day today. And got lots in store for you, but first, just a couple little house cleaning things to take care of. Uh, My website, weissthoughts.com, W-Y-C-E, weissthoughts.com. There you can listen to each and every episode of said podcast, if you so desire. And uh, you can check out, oh, all kinds of information. You can leave a comment on the show, so on and so forth. You get, there's a link to my YouTube channel, which, by the way, if you want to search for me on YouTube, it's just look for Weiss Thoughts on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, type in Weiss Thoughts, and uh, I should pop up. Because as far as I know, I'm the only one that has that name for that channel. We are on X now, as it is known as. Used to be uh, known as Twitter, and uh, like I've been saying for the past few episodes, you know, tweet at me on Twitter. I had that down to a science. I thought, wow, what a great, what a great line. I'm sure someone else has used it before, but I said, if you want to tweet at me on Twitter, but now it's on X. So if you want to, I don't know, find me on X. It's at Terry Weiss, and you can follow me on X as well. And uh, by the way, the X, aka formerly known as Twitter channel is growing. I uh, picked up a few dozen new subscribers here in the past uh, 14 days, which is good. And uh, what else? Uh, yours truly has narrated an audiobook on Audible. There's a link to it on X as well. If you go to audible.com and just search for my name, Terry Weiss, I've done that. I've started doing some audiobook stuff again, and I've uh, gone under the name, my name, obviously, Terry Weiss there. And what else? I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, we got a Facebook page at Weiss Thoughts. And I've got a website, terryweiss.com, if you need some voiceover work, audiobook stuff done. Uh, if you want, you know, some podcast intros done, I do all kinds of production work with that. You know, talk over your video, whatever. All right, enough shameless plugs about me. Let's get into said program, shall we? So what are we going to talk about today on Weiss Thoughts? Well, I wanted to talk to you about... A few things, actually. I I really don't have a quote-unquote scripted show, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sip of coffee here in the studio. Hang on. Mm. Nothing like a little coffee with some caramel macchiato in it. And uh, I don't know. Have you had that, Mr. Producer Extraordinaire? You had the coffee with the caramel macchiato? It's good stuff. And I'll tell you, the it's by Coffee Mate, caramel macchiato, if you can get that where you happen to be listening to the show. Uh, the only thing that kind of gives me a moment of pause about uh, the coffee mate caramel macchiato flavor is that it has a very long expiration date. So I'm like, hmm, even after you open it, you know, some things, some things you open and it says use within 14 days of opening or 20. This says, I mean, this was good for like nine months. And I'm sure before then it was on a truck in a cooled place or something or, and, uh, but I'm using it and I uh, haven't had no, uh, Suffered no ill effects since then, so we will see what happens with that. But, uh, yeah, it's good stuff. If you like uh, caramel and macchiato and you want to dip a little bit into your into your coffee, it's not bad. So, anyway, uh, we're going to talk a lot about on, uh, stuff on today's program. But before we get to that, of course, we've got to, we've got to do our wordsmith word for this episode. Oh, I love those special effects, Mr. Producer Extraordinaire. So today's wordsmith word, let's let's hear it, and uh, we'll talk about it. Diapason. What was that? Can you say that again? Diapason. Diapason, spelled D-I-A-P-A-S-O-N. It's a noun. Now it has three type of meanings. First, an organ stop sounding a main register of flue pipes typically of eight-foot pitch. Mm. Okay. Second meaning can be a grand swelling burst of harmony. So you can say, oh, the orchestra had a great diapason. That one I can see me using. And the third meaning for this, the entire compass, range, or scope of something. 
That would be probably where I would use that. Uh, diapason. Is that how I say it? Diapason. Okay, good. Diapason. So, you know, in a sentence, uh, I don't just want one option. I want to choose from the diapason. That would be the third uh, meaning or use of the noun, the entire copus range or scope of something. So that's probably where I would use it. But again, the diapason from the orchestra sent chills through my body. Eh, okay. Uh, the final chord of the hymn sounded the diapason through the cathedral, which would be the first meaning, which is probably where I, uh, I wouldn't, I really wouldn't use that in that in that sense. So, so there you go. Now you can you can go out and impress all the folks today with your big brain diapason. Uh, that was today's wordsmith. Well, oh, oh, you didn't give me the effect, Mister Producer. Come on. Oh, okay now. Wordsmith word of the episode. You got to be quicker on the draw than that, Mr. Producer, I'll tell you. Uh, you're not up for a raise or an employee review, are you? No? Okay, good. <laughs> All right. No, I'm just kidding. So anyhow, uh, welcome one and all. Welcome to this uh, little ditty here I call Weiss Thoughts. And I'm glad you stopped by. And uh, hey, you know, if you like the program, just leave us a rating and review. Even if you don't like the program, leave us a rating and review. You can do it right on the website at Weiss Thoughts. And oh, by the way, there's a blog on my website too called Weiss Life. God, enough shameless plugging. So what are we, let's get down to brass tacks, as they say. What do I want to talk about today on the program? I want to talk about perseverance and the ability to adapt on this episode of Weiss Thoughts. And I've had some people reach out, oh, a little more coffee here. Uh, it's, it's early morning as I'm recording this episode of the podcast, so I try to, uh, they say if you drink cold stuff, it's better. But for me, it's, it's a warm liquids cup of coffee or tea or something. But anyhow, anyhow, I digress. I want to talk to you about perseverance and the ability to overcome and adapt on this episode. I've, I've had people reach out to me and uh, they say, hey, you know, Terry, you talk a lot about, you know, certain aspects of life, what to do, what not to do. You give advice, you give your, your real world uh, examples. And uh, we truly appreciate that. And, you know, we're, they, they asked me, they said, well, what do you do? You know, a lot of times people ask me, well, what do you do in this situation? Or what, what do you suggest in that situation? And, and I'm going to preface, and <clears throat> like I write back to folks when I, you know, when I respond to them, I tell them, listen, I am not any kind of licensed professional, no medical, mental health advocate. You know, I, I took no formal training. I didn't even take an introductory class or anything. So, you know, taking the advice from me, just so you know, you know, I'm just the plain old Joe and Jane Schmo like you out there, uh, just kind of doing doing my thing, and we're all making our way through life together. I've just I've had some experiences that I'd like to share that I think that hey maybe this can help somebody or maybe you know somebody can say hey I've had a similar situation like that I I've gone through something like that or oh man I'm going through that something like that right now T and and I get where you're coming from man. And if I can help, great, because that's what I do. Um, when I find myself in a situation where I'm like, hmm, I, I just don't know what's going on. Um, I don't know what's happening or I just I'm at a crossroads, I guess, is the easy way. When I'm at a crossroads trying to figure something out, I will seek out or listen to folks that are I don't I don't know if I want to use the word smarter than me, maybe more experienced, um, more, you know, have have had a little more life experience or may have gone through something similar or just have a good ear to listen. I guess that's the easy way to say it. They, they've got a good ear and they're just listening. They're, they're good to listen. And so I I find that helpful. Now, that is not to say that I, as soon as strife or indecision may strike me, because let's face it, it strikes everybody. We all have to deal with it at one time or another in our lives, some of us more than others. That being said, however, it, don't get the idea that as soon as some strife or indecision you know, enters my life that I'm running for, hey, help me. Oh, I'm, you know, I sit 
and think about things. Um, some would say that know me maybe more, I ruminate more than I should. I'm just a thinker. Uh, that's something I've always been ever since early childhood. I'm a thinker. Uh, and that's what I do, man. I, I think on things. So when I come across an obstacle, I try to think it and figure it out for myself first and gather information from different sources that I deem worthy of giving my attention to and, and uh, credence to. So to overcome, I mean, perseverance and, and have perseverance, you know, to, to overcome adversity or in that and to have perseverance, I think you have to, at least as, for, as far as I'm concerned, you need to be willing to be flexible. That's one thing. You really got to need, you have a need to be flexible. That's, that's really important. Uh, the other thing is that you need to be willing to surrender yourself and surrender your ego. And, oh, man, I know for me that can be a, that can be a challenge. Um, and I've heard some say, you know, there's a lot of egotistical people in today, today's society. And I, I tend to agree with them. And you know what, my friends, at, at times I'm one of them, you know, because, hey, let's face it. We all want our way, right? You want your way. You want things to work out your way. You know, we all set expectations on things. And you say, hey, you know, I want this to happen. I want that to happen. Um, you know, you go into a job interview and you say, hey, I want, you know, $30 an hour to do this job. And they come back with 20 and you're like, oh, and then you negotiate or something like that. Or you go to a... Uh, holiday event or a party and you say, I want, well, they better serve the food at this time and they better, you know, we all have certain sets of expectations. Even, dare I say, even as a, as far as our own lives, we have expectations. You know, I want to be making X amount of dollars by this age. I want to have X amount of dollars in the bank by this age. Um, you know, I want to do this, do that, you know, and have X amount of this and when things don't happen the way we want them to, then, you know, that indignation, that um, procrastination and things like that can creep in and, you know, make us miserable. I mean, let's be honest. I, I've had it happen to me many times in my life. And that's where you have to really persevere and learn how to deal with, with obstacles and, and have great perseverance and Sometimes seeking outside counsel um, is the best thing. Now, some people turn to their friends. Some people turn to family members. Some people turn to a combination of those to do that for them. I guess it, it, it all depends on your social circle and, and whom you feel most comfortable in, uh, in confiding. And some people don't have to. Some people just would rather... Uh, take themselves away into, you know, either a walk in nature or they just kind of seclude themselves for a while and then go from there, make their decisions and, and chart their course of action. But the thing is, is that your, your best, uh, I, at least I feel, your best decision, your, your, you serve yourself best, I guess is what I would say. You serve yourself best when, okay, when you do not make harsh, rash decisions off the cuff. I've, man, I mean, haven't you found that to be the case? I mean, somebody says, hey, you want to do it? And you don't think about it and say, yeah, okay. And you commit to something. And then later on, you're like, oh, I shouldn't have committed to that. I really didn't want to do it. Or, oh, I got, a, I forgot I got a scheduling conflict. I didn't look at my calendar or what have you. Or you say, you know what? I, I had a, you know, I've had, four bad days at work, you know, the heck with this place, I'm quitting. And you get emotional and you make a rash decision and then you're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should have just taken a few deep breaths. I should have, you know. Or you, you maybe blow up at a friend or colleague, you know, because you're having a bad day. You know, you stubbed your toe getting out of bed and then the, the shower was cold and then there was a traffic jam on the way to work and you spilled coffee on your favorite tie or whatever or, you know, pair pair of uh, pants. And you're just having one of those days and then someone says good morning and you go, what's going on about it? And you snap at somebody and then you're like, well, I was a jerk. 
yeah, I shouldn't have done that. So, you know, there's there's lots of things, you know, making rash decisions and that can, can lead to that. So, you know, perseverance, I mean, in anything, and I've shared many times on, on this podcast, one of my long-term goals, and you, I mean, come on, let's face it, you guys out there know, you know, we've been talking about this for a while, at least I have, you're probably sick of hearing me say it. I want to get out down to 199 pounds. And I know some of you out there are saying, all right, Terry, you, you blimp. You know, I'm getting there, you know, 216. I'm, we're, we're, heading on the, we're, we're heading on the downward escalator again. You know, one time my heaviest, I was, I was approaching 230. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't mind oversharing a little bit here on the podcast. I'm six foot, almost six foot one. You know, everybody says, well, you don't look bad. I mean, you don't look fat. Or, I can I can see it in my face a little bit. Um, but I definitely carry that around my midsection, a lot of my weight around the midsection area, which is not, I know it's not good for you, but I am starting to lose some of that as well. And overall, you know, as you uh, gain in years, shall I say, you gain in years, you, you find that, oh boy, that... Uh, my knees carrying this extra, you know, 17 pounds, 20 pounds around is really hurting my knees and my back. You know, I've had some back concerns over the years and some some minor knee inconveniences over the years. And I feel that just getting down to that, you know, shedding that extra 20 pounds would be so beneficial. You know, And it's about perseverance. It really is. It It's about dealing with setbacks, how you handle uh, dealing with those setbacks, and overcoming and persevering. And a lot of us struggle. I mean, I'm right there with you, especially those of you, my friends, who are on that, you know, the healthy weight journey. Uh, I'm right there with you. Believe me, I don't weight shame anybody. Is that a term, Mr. Producer? Weight shame, shame weight? No, weight shame. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't sit there. Even I have relatives that are morbidly obese, and I pray for them. I... But, you know, it's it's hard to have a conversation with them about it because you don't want it to come off like you're being condescending or shameful to them. Um, but, you know, I, I, I have said on a couple of occasions, listen, I, I love you dearly. And the only reason I'm saying this is I have concerns about you. I understand it's your life. You're going to do what you want to do. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you're going to do what's best for you. And I get that. I totally do. However, I just want to tell you outside third person perspective what I'm seeing and I'm here to help in any way possible. I'm here for you. Okay? The the T man's here for you. And and it is no way a judgment on you or anything. I I you know, I think try to approach with love. But it's it's sometimes we need that encouragement to persevere. You know, you need encouragement. You need somebody to step in and say, "Hey, I'm on your side. I'm with you." I'm willing to help. I'm willing to lend a hand. And, and that's a great thing. That can be, and that can be a great motivator. <laughs> I mean, at least for me, I know it has been. It, it can be a great motivator. Sometimes somebody steps in and says, hey, I heard you're doing this. And man, good for you. You know, if there's anything I can do, let me know. I'm here for you. Ah, sorry, a little more coffee there. Apologies. Just got to keep the pipes uh, somewhat lubricated here this morning. But overcoming those those obstacles and that, and it's tough. And, you know, it doesn't matter what the obstacle is. You know, some people have um, certain phobias and disorders. And, and believe me, I can empathize with you. Um, some people have fear of leaving their house, fear of crowds, fear of flying, fear of social situations. Fear. It seems there's a lot of that going on in the world today, isn't there? There's a lot of phobias and, and a lot more awareness of mental health especially, you know, after what happened in 2020, you know, there was a lot more focus on the mental health thing, uh, aspect of our lives, which, which is good, which is good. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I feel that obviously it's something that we should have been focusing on, dare I say, all along, you know, some people just got left by the wayside and scoffed at, literally scoffed at because, oh, 
what's the matter with you? I mean, you, you don't like crowds or you don't like, I worked with a young lady about a decade ago in a, in a, in a, uh, in a situation in a, an office place that she had a, a God lover thing. When things got loud auditory, I mean, loud crowds, loud music, loud cheering, you know, kids screaming, yelling, whatever. Loud noises at a, a certain consistent level. Not, I'm not talking about, oh, somebody's yang yippee or short burst. I'm talking about something where like a crowd mumbling noise was getting loud and everything. She had a fear of that and it caused her great anxiety. And, uh, you know, the first time it happened in our work situation where we were, we were in a, uh, you know, we had a crowd, a crowd of people in, in, the, uh, in the location we were working out of. And myself and a couple other people noticed that she just disappeared. And, um, you know, she's in the back in the break room, just kind of sitting there staring off and, you know, went in and say, Hey, you know, is everything okay? Are you not feeling well or whatever? And at first she was reluctant, but you know what? I give her kudos. I give her great credit because what she did is after a moment or two, she says, no, I'm all right. I'm, you know, how everybody says it. I'm fine. I'm all right. I, and if you're not, say you're not, there's no shame. And to her credit, and I and I I applaud her to this day. I think about this every once in a while. I applaud her to this day. She said, "You know, I just I'm fine. I'm not sick or anything. It's just that I have I have a very sensitive reaction to loud auditory sounds, like loud crowds or loud places. And sometimes she goes, not all the time. It's a weird thing." She said, "Terry, it, but sometimes it just overwhelms me for." I don't know what reason, and it makes me very anxious. And I, I looked at her, and I listened. The best thing you can do in that point, at that point, if someone's telling you something or coming to you for your advice or opening up to you, because don't we all have a, a fear of opening up, especially to people that aren't close-knit friends or family, you know, our, our colleagues and that? Sometimes it's, it's a scary thing to open yourself up to someone else, and it can be. I mean, some of us love to overshare, you know, but some of us, it's, it's a very personal, a very deep-seated personal thing. And uh, I just sat there and I listened to her. And I waited for her to get done, you know, speaking. And when she did, I, I nodded and I said, you know, I hear you. And I can understand that. Certainly, I can understand that and empathize with that. And I said, you know, and I just started talking with her. Just And I, I think... I believe, you know, we talked for about 15, 20 minutes, just general banter. I asked her, you know, more about, hey, you know, when did you notice this? Really? Oh, my God. You know, and, and I started thinking back, to, you know, you know what? I, I get it. Sometimes I'm not the best person in big crowds or, you know, and, and uh, we just talked. And I think just talking to someone, really listening to them, not listening to answer, but listening to listen. And that's a great skill, and that's something I still tr uh, tr tr struggle with. Learning how to speak is another thing. That's something I still at times struggle with is listening to listen. That's a great skill. I'll tell you, if you want to improve yourself and if you want to really, you know, people will love you if you just listen to listen first and then respond. Because a lot of us, and myself included, I'm raising my hand virtually here in the studio, Sometimes, and some of, some of us more times than others in conversation, we listen to respond. And I believe by just listening to her to listen, taking a few extra moments, really internalizing the information I was getting and the fact that this, this other human being was opening up to me about, you know, her, her obstacle and something that she was dealing with, and then just offering honest, insightful caring insight and conversation, I think really helped in that situ situation. And then we went back out, you know, onto the, onto the floor there of the, of the uh, location and she was pretty much fine the rest of the day, which was okay. You know, and I'm not telling you that to get a virtual pat on the back to say, Oh, Terry, you're a hero. No, I'm just saying sometimes to persevere or to help someone with an obstacle, sometimes they just need someone to listen to them. Listen to listen, not to respond. And that's something that I, that's a mantra I put in my head sometimes, especially when I'm having a conversation, because 
I don't know about you. I've done it. Someone's telling me about something and they're, they're going on and on about it. And it's important to them. And you're listening. You're looking at them eye contact and nodding. And, and you might be hearing after a minute or two only every other word because you're thinking, oh, what do I got to get off that shopping list? Uh, do I got to go shopping later? Do I got to do this? And you're not really focused on the other individual. And that's a disservice. And, and I'm just as guilty of it. So I think listening to listen instead of listening to respond is definitely a great skill that we all can keep working on continually. Um, but things you can do to overcome obstacles and to, and to persevere, uh, you just got to you got to be willing to when when needed, you've got to be willing to seek out advice from others or other sources. Open up your mind. Um expand your expectations and not pigeonhole yourself into this is the only outcome that will work for me. You can't have that. You've got to be, you've got to be like, as Bruce Lee once said, be like water. Water can flow and adapt. You know, when water gets blocked going downstream, it'll look for other avenues. It'll look to go round, up, above, down to the side, to the diagonal. Water looks to get through any way it can. How many of you ever had a leaky roof? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, or a basement, you know, flooding problem. You know, water will, will look any way to get where it wants to go. So I think as far as us as human beings go, the best thing for us to do would to be be like water. Listen to advice, um, you know, set, you know, expand our expectations. Be willing to, you know, just listen to other people, take that information into account and know that you can accomplish what you need to accomplish. You can persevere. You know, don't, the, the, the quickest way to success is to respond and rebound from every failure in one form or the other, no matter what it is. As you know, there's so many people out there that have said, I want to do this. I want to start a business. I want to sing. I want to learn an instrument. I want to expand my vocabulary. I want to read more books. I want to get healthier. I want to change my eating plan. I mean, I can go on and on and drone on and on with all the things people say, say they're going to do. But how many of us actually get out and actually do it? Yeah, none. <laughs> yeah, we wait. We wait. We always wait. And why do we? The following. Yeah. All right. Stop, Mr. Producer. You're hurting me here. You're hurting me. <laughs> Many of us just uh, sit on the fence. And Mr. Producer, I don't know. you got to stop touching buttons in there. Are you drinking caffeinated coffee? That's probably why. But yeah, you know, many of us, like I said, we do a lot of, th you know, we say a lot of things we want to do, but do we do the things we say? You know, do we make those changes? Do we set that goal? Do we make steps to achieve that goal do we constantly look for ways to adjust uh, and find ways to overcome and persevere? Hey, thanks for listening to the program today. I truly appreciate each and every one of you out there. And remember, to see a change in the world, you have to be the change in the world you want to see. It all starts with you a person looking back at you in the mirror every morning. Remember to be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. If you want to tweet at me on Twitter, it's at Terry Weiss. Stop by the website, weissthoughts.com. Just to make sure you spell my name right, W-Y-C-E, weissthoughts.com. And hey, leave us a positive rating and review on your favorite podcast provider, won't you? Tell your friends, tell your family. Tell your pets about Weiss Thoughts. And I look forward to gathering yet again around the virtual campfire with you real soon. Take care. <laughs>